Okay, final feelings as the dogs and jackets get ready for what is an important game for Georgia for sure. Win, and you are almost certainly in. Georgia, uh, a pretty significant favorite to win this game. Um, I'd be pretty shocked if they lost this game. I wouldn't be stunned if it were close or something like that, but – you know, at the end of the day, um, you know, Georgia's a lot better than Georgia Tech, and I expect the, the with the way Georgia's playing lately, uh, for them to to win this game, uh, for I would say as close to for sure as I can think. I mean, you know, this would be this would be on par with Georgia losing to South Carolina in 2019, which is the last time Tech, excuse me, was the last time Georgia lost this game. So for the Jackets. Um, you know, I don't know what they're going to be doing at quarterback. I mean, Haynes King has been a very good player for them. He's not been able to play a lot lately. Um, and that's, you know, that's that's been a challenge for them. I mean, it's something that um, that's, you know, not being able to throw the football as a quarterback is not great. And, uh, you know, against NC State, they had some real challenges <clears throat> against. Uh, I mean, lately they've had some challenges uh, offensively uh, throwing the football with King. Um, now he's not had to throw an incomplete pass, but at the end of the day, you know, you're talking about um, Aaron Fowler coming in, probably starting. Um, but we'll just see. I mean, I don't. You know, I don't know what Brent Key's going to do. Um, I don't know sort of what Tech's game plan is. But I'll say this. If they're not going to be diverse in their offense, if they think they're just going to run the ball all night, you know, all you have to do is look at the teams that have tried to do that lately. It, it, it It's really challenging to succeed that way. You have got to throw the ball and run the ball both. It's got to be both. I mean, Auburn tried to run the ball the whole day on Georgia, and they lost, you know, by a significant margin. Florida lost by two scores. Massachusetts lost by a lot, whatever the score was. So, you do have to be diverse in the way that you attack Georgia. Now, with that said, Georgia's offense is coming into its own right now. It sure seems like it to me. This feels different than it was most of the season. And, you know, you don't have ETN in there, but Nate Frazier has really picked up um, some things. Uh, he's picked up along the way. He's, he's become a very good running back for them probably since the Florida game. I mean, ETN has not really played since Texas. And I, I don't know when he will be back. Um, I don't I don't know. Maybe he'll be back against Texas or Texas A&M. We'll just have to see. But, you know, this team has most of the year been a particular style, which is the, you know, it's not right to call it high flying, but different for, for Georgia. At the beginning, before the season, I talked about how I felt like this offense was going to be much more the way that the 2020 Alabama team played, um, you know, a lot of throwing the football, a lot of getting the ball to the perimeter, a lot of attacking with the pass. Georgia has been like that. Now, the difference is that Georgia has had to be like that in many instances because the running backs and the offensive line just its not been there most of the season. Now, all of a sudden, not all of a sudden, but these last few games, they've been able to run the ball more effectively. And, you know, Georgia will turn the ball over again this season. But lately, Carson Beck has been really good. I mean, you know, when you – when you the, the, the turnover games have not cost Georgia losses, okay? The, the, well, against Alabama, that cost them the game. But his play in that game was pretty exceptional in the second half. But when you look at the Texas – three interceptions, the Florida three interceptions. I mean, he's had three games where he's had three interceptions in the game. The rest of the season, he's had three. So, I mean, you know, those were, you know, two of those were really good teams on the road. Well, Georgia's not going to play any more really good teams on the road um, in, you know, unless they lose an SEC championship game. And then, you know, I just don't know if they'll be the same sort of situations. I mean, they were playing number four Alabama at the time undefeated on the road. They were playing number one Texas undefeated on the road at the time. You know, just some real quick math here. He scored – he threw two touchdowns against the Gators. He threw none against Texas. He threw so he he's thrown eighteen and two. He's been eighteen touchdowns 
and excuse me, 18 and three. He's been 18 and three, 18 touchdowns and three interceptions in all of the other games they played. Two touchdowns, no interceptions against Tennessee. No touchdowns and an interception against Mississippi, uh, against Texas. Excuse, I did I did I? I don't think I counted the Florida game. My point is, when you look at you know the production now, nine of his touchdowns have come against you know not good teams in Tennessee, Chattanooga, and UMass. And there's been plenty of conference games where you know Carson has not thrown a touchdown. Mississippi, Texas, uh, Kentucky. You know, they won two of those three games. And the fact of the matter is, right now, he's running more efficient, efficiently and effectively. He's now, you know, unlike the middle part of the season, he's had multiple games now where he's had at least a 10 yard run, three of the last four. Just say a nine yard run or more, all four of the last, you know, games. He didn't have that at the beginning of the season. So, you know, Carson's playing better, period. I mean, these last two games, the completion percentage, has been around 65%. He's thrown six touchdowns, no interceptions. Um, it's just it, he's just played better. You know, against Texas, it wasn't great. Against you know Alabama, it wasn't great. Against Florida, it wasn't great because of the turnovers. Uh, but when when you're asking Stets, I almost said Stetson Bennett, when you're asking Carson Beck to throw for 30 plus every single game, he's thrown for 40 passes or more. Uh, it's looking like the Bama game, the Mississippi State game, the Texas game, the Florida game, uh, and then the Tennessee game. That's five games out of out of eleven. I mean, that's half the season. That's too much. That's too much. He's much more in, you know, when he's fewer, you know, th- fewer than forty. I think they've lost once, which was to Ole Miss. Now that was not because of him. They just, you know, Ole Miss just beat him that day. So. For this game and the Jackets, I've been focusing too much on Carson Beck. For this game and the Jackets, you know, Carson does need to play well, but it's the offensive line. And he said, you know, he told reporters the other day, uh, you know, if 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 I have time to go through my reads, that's a good thing. And uh, he's right. So, hey, make sure you're dropping by Red Zone to see Scott and Mindy. I know this is going out in the morning. You've got all day to go by uh, and get pick out Christmas gifts. We don't know if this is Georgia's last game in Athens. I would say, to be honest with you, I'm not sure I see a scenario where Georgia hosts a college football playoff game. Uh, there's a lot of reasons why. Namely, they're going to be favored in this game and the next game. Uh, in addition to that, if they lose – to Texas or Texas A&M, you know, they're probably going to be on the road. I'm not saying that's right, but they're probably going to be on the road. So um, let's just see how this goes. I'd be curious to see if a loss to Texas would drop Georgia below Tennessee. I'm not sure how that would make a lot of sense, but that's me. But anyway, you know, if Penn State wins, they're going to get a home game. If Notre Dame wins on Saturday, they're going to get a home game. The loser of the Big Ten Championship is going to get a home game. That leaves one spot. That spot could be Georgia, but we don't know. But I, I, if I had to guess right now, I would imagine they're going to win these next two games and play uh, as the two seed in the Sugar Bowl. Um, we'll see. They may not jump over Miami if Miami wins the ACC Championship. I have to tell you, that would be completely ridiculous. Um, in, in, in almost every single way, that would be completely ridiculous. But at the same time, you'd have to see what the matchups are and yada, yada, yada. But, you know, acting in that scenario like Miami's better than Georgia, it would be hard to fathom, honestly. I mean, you'd, at that stage, you'd have, I think, at least three wins over top ten teams. And and I don't know, you know, where Clemson would be, you know, but you'd, you'd have wins, a lot of wins at that stage over top ten teams. Our top 10 teams, nevertheless, top 15. And Clemson may wind up winning the ACC championship or at least being 10 and 2 and number 11. I mean, Clemson can still get into this thing. That's the why it's wild to me. But um, the ACC is not the most competitive thing. So I just don't see this there being another home game. I think the Big Ten has done what it's done. Um, and um, they're going to reap the benefit of that as it relates to hosting these games. They wanted that. It did work out that way. I don't know if we're going to continue to see this in the future, but with Alabama and Ole Miss losing, you know, Georgia's probably um, – we'll see. They may well still be uh, sort of the, the eight seed and host the nine, but we're a long way away from that. My suspicion is – that uh, they will win both of these games. And it could turn out either way, actually, uh, if they win the SEC or not, it could turn out to be a very 
fortuitous situation for them or it could be more complicated. Um, if you win the league, you are in a better position than almost anyone else. So that's important to remember. And, and I will say this in addition, if they beat Georgia Tech Friday night, tonight, uh, they will be in the playoff. It's, it's just with, with Alabama and Ole Miss losing, with um, – you know they're not going to punish the SEC's number two and send them out of the bracket like that. Just would not make any sense. And I think you would see the SEC really threaten to the legitimacy of the college football playoff. Frankly, um, I think there would be. I just it's not going to happen. So um, I think whoever the runner up is in the SEC, unless it's Texas A&M, is not going to get knocked out of the playoff. I mean, I think Texas. Uh, with Alabama and Ole Miss losing this past week, I think Texas is basically in now. I mean, I think the only way I just I don't see even if they lose to Texas A&M, I don't I don't see it personally. But that's me. So, um, you know, what I mean by that is if they well well if they do lose to Texas A&M, they'd be ten and two. It, it would be hard to I just and at that point they'd be losing to the best two teams in the AC, in the SEC. So I I just I think this is an important game for Georgia. Um, you don't get a lot of these uh, where your season can be locked in in a positive way and you can play on the front foot. Um, you know Georgia's been backed into a corner not fewer than two times this season, and that was the you know the Texas game specifically and the Tennessee game. You know in the Texas game. You know, Georgia had played at Alabama, and then they played against Auburn and played okay, and then they didn't play as well as people liked against Mississippi State. The Auburn game was pretty convincing win. I mean, 31-13, to 13, I mean, again, Carson was 80% passing, two touchdowns. I don't know after a while. But um, the, the other thing that's improved lately, you know, that Georgia's given up – Carson has been sacked once in the last two games. There's not been – I mean, with the exception of the State-Texas combination – there's you have to go all the way back to the beginning of the, the first three games of the season to see that happening. I mean, he, they gave up three to Alabama, two to Auburn, two to Florida, five to Mississippi because they were chunking it the whole time. But it's it's you know they're protecting better, and if they protect better, Georgia could completely blow Georgia Tech out. That that's not out of the realm of possibility. In a way, I think people are in a way just my take. I think you have to understand and realize that Georgia Tech is not like it was under Jeff Collins. Jeff Collins was a joke, okay? Brent Key is not a joke. He has done a really good job there. Now, with that said, that doesn't mean that Georgia Tech has had a steady season because they've not. I mean, they've been pretty up and down. Why? Because of quarterbacks. I mean, you can't – it's not like it's Brent's fault <laughs> the situation they're in because, you know, when you're starting quarterback, it's hurt like they have uh, – that's been happening. You know, it's, it's hard. It's hard for them, but, but, I mean, Tech played Georgia about as well as they could last year, and it was within within eight, and that was with a lot of things going Tech's way in Atlanta. Now, I know in Atlanta doesn't, but they, it's still their home field, and they can do all those things. I know it was like 80% or 70% Georgia people in the stands, but it's still their scoreboard. It's still their PA system. There's still stuff that, that you can do. It's still their student section kind of. So there's things that Tech could do and did do. Um, but, you know, Georgia has done a much better job. You're going to see it Saturday night. You're, you're going to see them hone in on this is what we want to do. This is the atmosphere we're going to create we're not just going to leave it up to the fans. We're going to create an atmosphere. And uh, they've done a really good job with that lately. Um, you know, Georgia's home games have not been overly close lately. I mean, you have a multi-score win over Massachusetts, a two-touchdown score over Tennessee, a 10-point win over Mississippi State because of a late touchdown. It would have been a 17-point win. You have a you know, 18-point win, I think it was, over Auburn. Um, you know, the Tennessee Tech game was not close. So Georgia has played well. Kentucky last year. I mean, it, the Missouri game last year was as close as Georgia came to, quote, losing in Sanford lately. And that was a nine-point win that they had. If it, I believe it was nine. I'll double-check that. That they had to grind it out at the end of the game. But they were not at the end of that game in real dire straits. Yeah, it was a nine-point win for Georgia. Um so, you know, I, I, I think to me, and like Carson didn't play great against Tech last year. He was okay. It was fine. 
but they just they ran on them a lot. And I, I just I don't know. People are just like, well, Georgia Tech's gonna run on them. Yeah, they're gonna run. They're gonna run really effectively against Georgia. They're good at that, or at least that's that's what they've been good at. I, I don't know if that means that they win the game though. And like Georgia folks do their best to um there, you know, there is an inherent, you know, Larry Munson that all Georgia folks do. And the wor- in many ways, the worst thing that could happen to Georgia each season is losing to Georgia Tech. Um, but, you know, this is a Tech team that is really not spectacular at any one thing. I don't, I don't see here anything. Their rushing defense is pretty good. They're top 35 in rushing defense. But they're not so super, superlative with the exception of third down defense where they're allowing 31%. That's about it. And they don't commit a lot of penalties. So that they're, they are, they're not dumb, which we've known for a long time. But, you know, Georgia Tech, I mean, Notre Dame completely out-athleted them. Miami did too, but... Miami ain't the same as Georgia. They're just the they're just wild and it's just not the same. Louisville, I think, out disciplined. That game was on the road. The Virginia Tech game was on the road. The Syracuse game was on the road. I mean, the only away game that they have won is at North Carolina. So they lost to Syracuse by three, which surprised me. They lost to Louisville, you know, by four by uh, twelve up there. Played played okay, lost by twelve. And then they lost to Virginia Tech. Now, the Virginia Tech loss was because of the quarterbacks, but they have not played in a stadium larger than Virginia Tech. The, you know, Sanford will be uh, 93,000 people. It'll, it'll be almost 30,000 more folks at that game. So there will be a lot of, you know, it's not like Tech's never played in Athens before, and it's not like they don't see it, but they don't see it all the time. And this is the first time this season they've seen it. And they, it's possible they could get overwhelmed. Now, could you be in a fourth quarter fight with the Jackets? Yeah, you could. I mean, but that I don't think that necessarily means any one thing. Everybody always wants to get into a panic about Georgia Tech. I understand it. I grew up in Atlanta. Um, you know, I, I know I have had friends who have played there, friends who have coached that coach there. Um, you know, I've, I've played on on this. I played at Bobby, not Bobby Dodd, at um, the Thriller Dome, whatever the hell it's called. Uh, played on their tennis courts, uh, and you know, w- it, I get it. Um, I, I understand Tech, but. I mean, sometimes it feels like people are searching for reasons to get kind of concerned. And I, I got to say, man, as poorly as Tech played against um, against NC State, Virginia Tech, I mean, they, they beat NC State and played bad. I mean, their last four games have been a one-point victory against NC State where they almost lost and I would say probably should have lost, but they didn't because it's NC State, and NC State's good at losing. They The shocker over Miami. And then they've lost to Virginia Tech and lost to Notre Dame. That's their last four games. Like, there's there's no, like, besides beating Miami, which, no offense. I mean, and Tech, Tech outplayed them. But I don't know why people sound the alarm. I know why, but it's just what Georgia folks do. And, I, I, I mean, I've had Thanksgiving with my tech side of the family, uh, the non-in-law side, and there's no significant confidence there. Of course, they're always ne- very negative too, but there's been reason for them to be negative. I think Brent D- Key's done a great job. I think one day they will get Georgia. They will get Kirby. But if it were tomorrow or, or today, I'd be surprised. It would be pretty shocking, to be honest with you. I mean, a three-score t- underdog away – Winning probably without their starting quarterback, or at least a very limited one, it'd be one of the worst losses in Kirby Smart's career. I, I don't see that happening. But that's me. Make sure you're going by red zone, and we'll see you after the game.